So last time we looked at monoids. Um, addition, multiplication, concatenation, function composition where the guarded functions have the same input and output type. All of those are examples of monoids. If you're working with matrices, then matrix addition and multiplication are both monoids. Um, lots of different monoids turn up. Um, if you're doing exclusive or, or and, or or, um, bitwise operations, those are also monoids. It's any associate, well, any set equipped with an associative unital binary operation and an identity element. So here's the definition of monoid. Here we provide the set, or at least the contract, um, that accepts just that set of values and no others. The associative binary operation and a function that gives back the identity element. So here we see that it's binary, it takes two inputs, or it has one output. Here it's nullary, it takes no inputs and has one output. Um, to verify associativity and unital stuff, you have to write a test, and it doesn't always work, but that's because the problem is undecidable, and so you do the best you can. Here are two examples of monoids. One, you provide it with uh, the contract for a string, and it returns the concatenation of the two strings. The identity is the empty string. Here it's the monoid for addition, provide it for the, the contract for numbers. You add the two numbers, and zero is the identity. Now, a few videos ago, I described a monad. And a monad has a name that is very similar to a monoid, and that is for good reason. Um, Today we're going to look at the definition of a monad again and compare it to the definition of a monoid. So here, I've pasted in that definition above of monoid, and here I've got the definition of a monad. First thing we see is that instead of a contract for a set of values, we have a functor. we still have times and identity functions being passed in. So let's see what it does. It says we get a functor and then we ask for a contract. These two lines are the only bit that are really different. Here we still create this product. We still insist that t is a functor. I'm sorry, a function. This, this thing. But here, instead of using the contract twice, that is, a binary function, we apply the functor twice to the type. And instead of having a single value as the output, we use the functor a single time. Now here, we use the functor no times. And here we have no inputs. And here we use the functor once, and then we get one value passing that contract out. So here, wherever we saw set, we're going to see functor that many times applied to t. So here we see two sets for input. Here we get it applied twice to t. Here we see one set on output. There we have it applied once to t. Here we have it applied no times to the input. So there it's applied no times to t. We have one set for the output. So applied once to t. And here is the contract. There it's applied once to t. Here we have the times method. Here we have, sorry, the, the times guarded function, this binary function. Here we have times applied to t. Similarly, ident and ident applied to t. So these have 
these deep similarities. In fact, the way to state it is a monad is a monoid in the category whose objects are functors and whose morphisms are natural transformations. Natural transformations are maps between functors. So this says times is a natural transformation between functor twice and functor once. That's why I had no times once and twice in the definition the first time when we looked at, at monads. So in the same way that monoids use the Cartesian product of two contracts, monads use this tensor product, which is composition, to combine the functors. So here we combine cat or, um, contracts, which combine these two contracts into a single um, contract for a product, for a pair, and over here we combine these two functors, they happen to be the same, but we combine them by composing them rather than taking their product. This more general operation of putting two things together um, that isn't necessarily pairing is what's often referred to as a tensor product. Um, but this is a monoid just in a different category than the category of contracts and guarded functions. It's a mo monoid in the category of functors and natural transformations. We can use this version of the monad to do something like this. Monad array of array of flatten array of unit. So now, array of monad, I can refer to its T um, property and get out, sorry, I need to apply array of monad. What I got back was this function that takes in a contract. So I'll do that, array of monad in 32. So this thing is an object with a T property that is array of int32. So it's a contract for arrays of ints. It has a times property that is flattening arrays of int32s. And it has a one property that is wrapping an int32 in brackets. So let me say our this and if I do bracket one of five let's log this console dot log run well what do we get? It's an array five so it has wrapped five in brackets if on the other hand we use times here then it's expecting an array of arrays of in 32s so if we run that one run that one Then we get a flat array, one, two, three, four, five. And if we say dot t, 
then this expects that t is the contract for array of integers. So if we have 5, 6, 7, we ought to see 5, 6, 7 come out here. There you go, 5, 6, 7. It passed. If on the other hand we have something that is not an int32 in there, it will say expected a 32-bit integer. 